I'm back, baby. Yes, yes, enough of that. Hello and welcome. Now, where have I been? I'm very sorry there hasn't been a video the last couple of weeks, maybe even three weeks. As is usual, around this time of year, the events business works very hard up until Christmas and then you kind of come to the end of the season and it comes to a complete stop. And just like every year for the last 20 years, as soon as I finish work at Christmas, I immediately crash and it just goes to pieces and I, I can barely bring myself to get up or do anything. And I always come down with whatever bug is going around at the time. So I finished work on the 23rd of December and I called in the shop on the way home to get some the meat for Christmas and within half an hour I was done. I could hardly move and I texted some of my friends, my colleagues as well. They were all exactly the same. So Pat Sandra is getting too old for it. But it's always been so and it's the same for everyone who sort of works in a live event industry because we're all self-employed and you tend to not notice that you've perhaps been wearing down and it sort of gets it gets too much but you don't notice because you have to keep going you just have to there's no you can't stop you can't let people down you can't phone in sick so you just you don't really realize it's happening and you just keep going and it comes to an end and that's the end but I think that's done. I think I feel almost normal again. And I come back to the workshop and you'd think that would be very easy. But unfortunately, the place is a bit of a mess. And I'm going to show you that now. And I've got to sort this out first. But it's a good opportunity for a look around and a tidy up. And we'll make things even better before we kick off for next year. Poor old Rusty here. And we'll get into that. I can't wait. So let's have a quick look around. And that's where I'd usually work on the bike. But obviously, as you can see, there's not a lot of room at the moment. Okay, I've got lighting. I've got Christmas lights. Stuff from the house. Tech gear. I've got flight cases. Got all my some old tech that I got to get rid of. Royal Enfield stuff. Workbench isn't too bad. Got all my tanks. So many tanks. Flight cases. I got stuff on top of stuff. So obviously while I'm working, I'm just grabbing bits and not putting things away properly. Got some truss there. That's to make some light columns. Random guitars. Plastic plants, because obviously, why wouldn't you have a pile of plastic plants in the corner of your workshop? I think they're left over from a, a wedding show or something. That's how you can use them. Set pieces, you've got flight cases, keyboards, speakers, screens, rigging winches. A desk that I can't even reach. Projectors, speakers, more plastic plants. Because of course, why not? What have you got there? I'm not even sure what's in that flight case. I probably haven't even opened that for a couple of years. It's probably got some kind of screen in. Projection surface. Yes, yeah, big, big projection screen. Big speakers, don't use them anymore. Loads of stuff I should probably sell, but you just can't sort of, can't sort of bring yourself to do it because you just know as soon as you sell something, you'll need it. African drum.
So this needs a good tidy. And then back in the main area, all this needs sorting as well, look. Random, random, <laughs> so much stuff. That's having a play with some um, wallpaper as well. Because I've noticed when I'm filming these two white walls, they don't half glow really white. And I think it might be really distracting, just having that whiteness in the background. It just seems a bit much. So I thought about just decorating the walls a bit, just to take the edge off all that whiteness and give a bit of a contrast, just to make it easier to see. That might just be imagining it. But, you know, it's always a bit of fun to play, as we know. Don't worry, brick wallpaper will not end up on the bike. <laughs> All my stuff, all my tools, oh my god, there's so much to do, there's so much to do. Right, I better get on with this and make this look better. As soon as I've sorted this out, we'll have a proper video. So no bike content as such today. Although, let's have a look at some of the bits and pieces that have just started arriving, because that's always nice to see. Have a look at these. Right. From India, about 38 pounds, I think. Very muchly required is a complete lock kit. So we've got a nice new fuel cap. All original. The amazing price of about £37 delivered. I could barely get anything from the next town for £35 delivered, let alone from India. There's a new lock barrel. It is longer than the Meteor one, actually, although I'm sure inside it's the same. Two keys and two new side panel locks. And the new retaining clips. So that is an excellent result. What else have we got? Yeah, and I think this is relatively expensive at about £55 from India. But again, that's an incredible price, really. And this should be Lovely new headlight assembly. Yes, Royal Enfield original part. So it's the one with the peak. Although I do like the one that comes with a new bullet, which is just the rim with a sort of slightly swollen front at the top. I think some classics have that as well, depending on the model. Oh, it even comes with a bulb, look. Oh, amazing. There we go, proper Royal Enfield part. Of a boot. Peak, excellent. Unbelievable value, £55, that's all. 
delivered from India. To look after that. These, I got these on eBay, um, used for £21, which is about half price. They're the touring footrests. And the silver alloy base. They've been fitted, but they're good as new. I've got the hero blobs on. Tell you when you've cornered far enough. That's an excellent little thing. What else? Now, funny enough, I got these for the Meteor long, long back. I was thinking of putting on my Meteor uh, project. It's the spring kit for um, fitting under the seat. So um, it's quite likely that will end up on the Classic. As you can see, I've got quite a lot going on here, really. I'll show you this as well, but I'm not sure about it. I got it from India. It's about £70 delivered to the UK. And it's a low rider seat. It's a proper classic 350 low rider seat. Let's just move back a little here. But it's had a third party genuine leather cover fitted but the workmanship is not really very good look at that stitching at the front here is that dying on the edge The logo is um, cut into the leather. I don't know how wise that is. So I'm really not sure what I think about that. I might sell that again. But hey, maybe it'll go with the rusty stuff. So It seems churlish to <laughs> pick holes in this, considering what I might be about to do to the rest of it. Right. Let's file that away and have a think about that. Right, what else? There's quite quite a few bits. I forgot about this one. Amazing deal. This was just £32 UK and it's a brand new tailpiece. Never been on a bike. Brand new, two brand new indicators, brand new rear light, complete housing. Thirty-two pounds, brilliant. If you compare that to what we had, which was wrecked indicators, ignore that paint because that's me playing. Broken rear light. I think that indicator was scratched as well. So sorted. That was a good find because I thought that was going to be quite expensive to solve that problem. I thought I might have to make something or to save money. But um, that was a good deal. Couldn't really get around getting a new shifter. Couldn't see any original ones online. But I think this was £20 for a brand new heel and toe one. So I can either position it to use as heel and toe or, or tilt it up a bit and just use it as a toe one. But I don't mind either way. And it comes with the new rubber as well. So 
And likewise, there is, let's get a knife and open it up. I know I'm supposed to be making less mess, but never mind. There's a new brake pedal. That wasn't too bad. I think that was just £17 delivered. For that price, it's not worth trying to unwind <laughs> that broken one. Where is the broken one? Should we have a look? There we go. There's the old one. And the new. I think new was a good idea. Yes. Weirdly, it didn't come with the rubber, but I think that was three pounds. The genuine Royal Enfield rubber. So brilliant. So, new foot pegs, new levers. Uh, new tail light, new headlight. Don't need that. Oh, and one more superb deal. Check this out. In fact, it's almost too nice. Brand new. Front mud guard. With the stays as well. Yeah, completely flawless. Not that I wanted it painted, even though it is technically the right colour for the bike. Brand new mud guard. Another just £32. That's all. Unbelievable. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe my luck. Look at that. It's the best bit about it now. Again, that's something else I thought I might have been very expensive or, or might have had to do without or invent something. But no. I can't believe it. So we've got quite a good collection of stuff to go on this bike now. Still the old bent forks. But I'm working on that. And also this um the switch ring is missing. And I may just have to live without that because I can't see it. It has got a part number, but I can't see it available anywhere, which isn't surprising. It must be very rare. So we might just we might just live without that. Or I might make something. So I don't want to buy a whole one of these just to get that. You can buy a whole one of the whole casket. That seems incredibly wasteful. Just to get the silver ring. So stick that on the back burner and I think that's pretty much all the bits I've got but that does cover quite a lot of the damaged parts I think new handlebars it will need because they look bent but um, well, that's a good start so I'm obviously I've spent it's a good 200, 250 pounds there, but it's a lot of new parts and it solves a lot of problems. Now we just have to make it pretty or something. There we go. Nothing exciting this week. Just a bit of a catch up just to let you know I'm still here <laughs> and have a look at the parts. I bet I'll tidy this place up and we'll do a proper video and get this engine out and really get into it. It's a bit of a shock seeing it all in bits, but I'm sure
the meteor went back together, I'm sure this will go back together as well. It really was quite unusual not making a video for the past couple of weeks. So we've been making one every week since May, which is <laughs> considering I didn't make any videos before. That's, that was quite, <laughs> you know, that's, that was quite a jump. And uh, it was, I was a bit hesitant about getting back into it because it seemed so weird making videos once I stopped. I, so I, I couldn't even remember how I was doing it, which is a bit weird. But um, I did miss making the videos a lot. I did miss getting to show you everything, and um, which is quite selfish, really, because I, you know, I wanted to make them. <laughs> But thank you very much for everyone who's watched and subscribed this year. I know everyone's sort of being very re retrospective and and thinking about things this time of year. But when I look back on this year, I can't believe that um, so many people have been watching and hopefully enjoying seeing the bikes come together. It's I love making the videos and um, I hope you enjoy them. I can't believe so many people subscribe I mean I think you're all mad you know thank you so much I hope it's not too boring you can always fast forward I know and I thought maybe I should make it more exciting but you know I thought I'll just make them and hopefully you'll watch them <laughs> and um, if there's something else you want to see or something different just tell me so I can worry about it. <laughs> but honestly, thank you very much. And if there are some other channels that you watch that you haven't subscribed to, but you do watch, do think about subscribing to them just to let the, the people making those videos know that you're watching them and enjoying them. I'm not asking for myself. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy. But perhaps if there are people you're watching, do subscribe because it does make them think that it's worth doing. Because I know before I started making videos for YouTube, there are channels that I'd watch and watch, but I wasn't a subscriber because you know what YouTube's like. Once you watch someone's video, it will keep recommending them anyway. So you almost don't, you don't even need to because it knows if you like a particular thing. So if there's someone you like, do subscribe because it really does um, it really makes a difference to them and to me. But I'm just thinking, you know, for all the other channels out there. And uh, there's some wonderful channels about, so many who've been very supportive. And um, I'm very lucky to have anyone watching. So right, enough mulling over. The year ends today, literally. We'll get back to this and I want to be riding this in springtime. So thanks very much again. I'll be back again. See you soon.